Let's take a look at the unit itself. As you can see, there is a touchscreen panel to control the operation of the unit, as well as a sample system to introduce gas into the unit and reduce pressure for safe ventilation. We have our gas input port and valve to introduce gas into the unit. The sample will pass through a liquid block membrane filter and pressure will be indicated on the input pressure gauge. It will then flow into the analytical cell, which has a purge function controlled by the operate purge valve. We will go into more detail on this feature in the maintenance section. After the sample passes through a cell, the reduction in pressure will occur at the regulator. For safe ventilation of the output, we recommend setting the output pressure on the output pressure gauge to about 25 PSI. Output flow is then set by the output flow metering valve. There is also a filter bypass port that allows you to create a fast loop for sampling or bleed off any liquids that may be caught by the membrane at high pressure. On the electronic side, we have our power input, our fuse, our power switch, USB port for the exportation of data, and various LED indicators, as well as mentioned before, the touchscreen panel, as well as a heatsink fan. When connecting sample lines to your unit, make sure all the valves are in the closed position and that the purge valve is in the operate position. Connect the output line to the output port and vent to an appropriate location. Connect the gas input line to the gas input port. If you're using the bypass port, connect the gas line to the bypass port. Note that the gas will exit the bypass port at the same input line pressure. Open the bypass one quarter turn. Keep the output closed, but do not over tighten. Simply zero out the valve. Slowly open the input valve to introduce pressure to the system. Opening too fast may trigger the liquid block filter and shut off flow. The liquid block is triggered by a pressure differential, so it's important to equalize the pressure slowly. The input pressure gauge should begin to show pressure. Close the bypass valve slowly as pressure begins to show on the gauge. Open the output metering valve so that five tick marks show on the stem of the valve. At 25 PSI, output, this should give you between 0.5 and 1 SLM. You should feel flow throughout the system and exiting the output port. Flow gas for at least three minutes to make sure the gas to be analyzed has replaced any residual gas that may be left behind in the unit. The startup screen will display the serial number and software version for the unit, as well as procedures for connecting sample lines and an important notice about the introduction of liquids into the unit. Remember to follow all safety regulations. Pushing the start button will take you to the status page. The status screen is the main default screen during operation of the unit. Here you will find several areas that indicate the status of the analyzer and measurement cycles. The temperature indicator shows the current temperature of the mirror. The pressure indicator shows the pressure at the measurement cell, which should match the input pressure. The status box shows the current state the analyzer is in before, during, and after measurements. It will indicate if the system is initializing, cooling down, warming up, or waiting for thresholds to be met in order to begin the next cycle. Below the status box, you will find the heat sink and system temperatures, as well as signal counts for detector channels 1 and 2. The last cycle box will display the test results with the latest test cycle performed and will remain until a new test is run. On startup, this box will be blank until a test has been completed. The graphical readout will show mirror temperature and the outputs of the detectors with temperature scaling to the left of the graph and detector signal values on the right. The channel 1 and channel 2 values below the graph correspond to the matching colored lines on the graph. The mirror temperature is represented by the blue line on the graph. 
The setup, log, and history page buttons will allow you to navigate to other screens. The abort cycle button is used to cancel a test cycle currently in progress. The shutdown button is used for powering down the analyzer. Once pressed, the system will prompt. Press yes to confirm and no to cancel. After the touchscreen goes blank, you may power down the unit using the illuminated power switch. The setup page is where you can select the number of test cycles to run, input user information, set time and date, and select units of measurement. The operator and location fields are used to input information that will be stored in the test files of the unit. The operator can be the technician or company that is operating the unit. The location can be the facility, wellhead site, or probe site. This information will be written into the summary and detailed test files stored in memory. The date and clock fields are used to enter the current date and time for the region you are operating in. This will be the time used by the system to timestamp the test results. The number of cycles to run box is where you enter the number of consecutive test cycles you would like the analyzer to perform, 1 to 30 cycles in one batch. Enter the number of cycles and press Run New Batch to begin. On page 2 is where you can select your units for temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius and pressure, PSI, bar, and kilopascal. You can also set a higher minimum temperature if you don't require the unit to cool down to the minus 30 Celsius limit to detect a dew point. You may also set a longer wait time between cycles. Once you are ready to begin running test cycles, return to the setup page and select the number of runs you would like to perform. Push Run New Batch and return to the status screen. Note that the system status says Test Started. Once the cooler turns on, the status box will say System Cooling Test Chamber. Notice the blue line on the graph begins to fall with the temperature of the cooler. Once a hydrocarbon dew point is found, the test results will be posted in the last cycle box. The unit will continue cooling until it finds another dew point or reaches the cooling limit. The test cycle has ended and now the system is in heat sink cool down mode. In order for the next test cycle to begin, all the temperatures including the crystal chamber, heat sink and system temperature must return to equilibrium, as well as the recovery of detector signals of channels 1 and 2. Once the measurements have been completed and you are ready to power down the unit, press the shutdown button and press yes when prompted. Turn off power when the screen goes blank and disconnect power from the unit. Relieve pressure by opening up the bypass valve for a few seconds. Close all the valves completely and disconnect your gas lines. Ensure the system has been depressurized by opening up the bypass valve momentarily to relieve any residual pressure. Close all the valves and close the unit and move on to the next test location. Navigate to the history page by pressing the history button in the bottom right of the status screen. The history page contains all the detailed files for each test cycle completed by the unit. The results are sorted and displayed according to timestamp and show the hydrocarbon dew point, water dew point, moisture content, and user location info. To export a test file or files, 
insert a USB thumb drive into the USB port on the instrument panel. Highlight your selections by pressing them on the screen, and then press the Export Detailed button to export the files for each measurement cycle. You will see a message in the bottom left of the screen indicating the number of files that have been exported to the USB. Pressing the Export Summary button will allow you to download the summary of the history page. You may also delete test files from the history page by selecting the test files and pressing the Delete button. To erase all historical data, scroll to the top of the page, select All, and press Delete to clear the history page. Note, the test files are not recoverable once deleted from the history page. The system log keeps track of all user input changes to the system, such as changes to chamber minimum, user and location changes, changes in cycle counts, as well as startup of the unit, and the start of test cycles performed. All data entries are time and date stamped, and the log may also be exported to a USB or cleared to start a fresh list. Let's discuss how you can power the Dewport. Dewport is a DC-powered instrument, and there are two options for powering the unit. One convenient option is to use the DP-PWR4000 portable battery. The battery will power the unit for two to four hours of operation and can be charged using the included AC adapter or the included DC adapter in a car or truck cigarette lighter connection. You just connect it to the unit using the included cable and you're all set to go. The other option for powering the dew port is to use the AC-DC adapter. You can plug this adapter into any AC source from 100 to 240 volts. The adapter also comes with all the necessary cables to connect to the unit. Do not connect the dew port to any other power sources. Do not use any other cables or connectors as this may damage the unit and void the warranty. Make sure all cables, batteries, and power supplies are supplied by the factory or an authorized representative. And remember to follow all relevant safety practices. The dew port does not require any routine maintenance if operated properly and within the specified guidelines. The filter in the sample system should be inspected at least every 60 days or more often with richer or dirtier gas. To change the membrane filter, make sure that the system is powered down and all gas connections have been removed. Confirm depressurization by opening the bypass valve and viewing the gauges. Unscrew the filter head. Remove the O-ring holding the membrane. Separate the membrane from the O-ring. Replace with a new membrane. Make sure the disc is still in place. Place the O-ring on the new membrane to secure in place. Screw the filter head back into the housing. If you attempt to power up the unit and the power button does not illuminate, first make sure that you are using the appropriate power connectors and that there is voltage at the source. Next, check the 10 amp fuse located on the instrument panel. If you suspect that there is liquid trapped within the system, you'll need to purge with an inert gas. To perform this task, remove the filter head from the housing. Remove the membrane and the O-ring.
remove the perforated disc and smaller O-ring underneath. Replace the filter head back into its housing. This will allow you to flush the unit at high pressure without triggering the liquid block. Close all system valves and turn the operate purge valve into the test cell purge position. Connect the 90 degree tube stub to the test cell purge output connection. Make sure it does not point towards you or anyone else. Connect an inert gas to the input and do not exceed over 100 psi input pressure. To begin this procedure, slowly open the input valve. Note that gas will exit the test cell purge connection at high pressure and any liquid trapped should be flushed out. Put the valve back into the operate position and slowly open the bypass valve. Gas will exit the bypass connection at high speed as well. Repeat these steps a couple of times to ensure all liquid is purged out. If additional cleaning is needed, contact the factory for service. As I mentioned earlier, the dew port does not require any calibration. However, its operation can be validated to ensure that it is working properly. To validate any analyzer, you need to use a known gas. In this case, you need a gas with a well-known hydrocarbon dew point or moisture standard. Unfortunately, moisture standards are difficult to make and store for a prolonged period of time. Therefore, we use a gas with a well-known hydrocarbon phase diagram. The best choice and the one we recommend is to use pure ethane. A bottle of 500 psi or less should be sufficient. Ethane has a very well-known phase diagram. So you can connect the sample of ethane and measure its dew point at one or several pressures to verify that the unit is working properly. If you contact the factory, we can supply you with the ethane validation spreadsheet that can be used in validation of the instrument. All you need to do is make a measurement and then input the data here. If the marker falls on the line, the unit is working properly. Please note that there is no need to verify the moisture function if you use the ethane validation. The same detectors are used for hydrocarbon detection and moisture dew point. So if the hydrocarbon function is working properly, you can be assured that the moisture function is also working.